It's gonna take Cracker Jack timing, Wang. Total concentration. You ready, Jack? I was born ready. Welcome back to the channel. This is Wes, and today I'm reviewing White Lily Number no. 1, a book funded through Kickstarter. This is part one of a five-part series recounting the true story of Lilia Litvia and Katya Budunova, members of the famed Russian Night Witches, an all-female fighter squadron during World War II. This series is a passion project for Pocket Jack's comics creator and writer Preston Poulter, as well as artist Lavelle Davis. Lavelle penciled issues 1 and 2 of this series and tragically passed away after issue 2's completion. As a military vet of 20 years, I've lost many team members over the years and it's never an easy thing. My heart goes out to Lavelle's family and the White Lily team. I'm very proud they've endured to continue this series to completion, ensuring Lavelle's artistic vision carries on in a story he was clearly passionate about himself. Rest in peace, Mr. Davis. You are loved and missed. With that, I'll begin my review. Lavelle does great work in White Lily, and his talent jumps off the pages. He's very adept at creating motion when necessary, and his work on faces is particularly good. Colorist Alonzo Espinoza never overpowers the scenes, and his true-to-life aesthetics fits a true story. I really enjoyed this particular aerial scene in the book, this is just the right amount of detail, and as I previously mentioned, Davis's face art is spot on. This invokes a feeling of danger as Katya, a flight instructor, has a close encounter with a Nazi scout plane. Later in the story, Lavelle takes a chance with a different layout design for aerial encounters. I'm a fan of artists taking risks and trying something different, but I don't think this really works. The style in the former scene is much more successful, and this honestly feels distracting. Overall, the art in the issue is very good, and while it isn't faultless, I scored a solid 3.5 out of 5. Preston Poulter has a deep admiration for the two main characters, Lilia in particular, and layers them with a great deal of development. After they learn they are to join the first all-female squadron, Lilia and Katya return to their mothers and receive unique forms of disapproval. Lilia's family is of Polish descent, and her mother disapproves due to the treatment they receive from the Russian military. Katya is told women aren't made to fight, and her mother claims only homosexual women enlist. Both women receive these wonderful collages that illustrate character motivations, and they couldn't be more different. Katya grew up on a farm and was captivated by the plane she saw flying overhead. She dreamed of becoming a pilot herself to the disapproval of her traditional mother. Lilia's backstory is a bit more tragic. Her father was taken into custody by Russian soldiers, as Lilia ran to him, calling out for her father, eventually taking a rifle stock to the head in front of her mother. The family witnesses her father as he is hanged from the neck. The reader can only imagine the amount of anger this kind of pain would breed, and you understand why she is portrayed as so headstrong and defiant. In my estimation, the character work is the strongest part of the issue, and I'll give it a 4.5 out of 5. The stage is set as Lilia witnesses her coffee shop being bombed on the way to her work as a flight instructor. She tells Katya her story, and they eventually talk about Stalin creating three new female air divisions. Both women are soon drafted to join the new divisions. They arrive at their new captain's office to be enlisted into the Red Army. There is immediate tensions between Lilia and her new commanding officer. During training, the women are instructed to flee during engagement and not try to shoot down the enemy, which doesn't sit well with Lilia. The book ends with Lilia going one-on-one -on -one in aerial combat practice with a male counterpart. She is given instructions to evade and instead takes a fight to him using several innovative techniques. She eventually wins the practice session and is met by a very angry instructor who wants to ground her for insubordination. The plot is well done and at the beginning stages of the story when the issue ends. I really like where this is headed and I give the plot a 4 out of 5 overall. This is a terrific story and the tale of the Night Witches probably should be known more commonly than it is. Preston Poulter goes to great lengths to illustrate the many obstacles Lilia and Katya overcome and the reader is rooting for them by the end. I give White Lily a 4 out of 5 overall and I highly recommend it. Poulter is selling issues on eBay, and I have placed a link to Pocket Jack's website, their mission state on YouTube, and Preston Poulter's Twitter in the video description. I believe the plan is to fund White Lily No. 3 through Kickstarter starting in April. Please keep an eye out for more information. Of course, that's just my take. What's yours? 
Are you interested to learn more about the Night Witches? Are you planning to support the campaign for Issue 3? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.